exists a path through the machine which ends in an accept state, then we accept the string. Follow? Okay, cool. Um, what's awesome about these is that there's like more, uh, they have more expressive power. Um, so, uh, or they don't have more expressive power, sorry. They have more ease of use. It's sort of the equivalent of like a kind of almost like a higher level program language or something. It's somehow easier for us to think this way, uh, whereas the same uh, uh, problem on a DFA might be like hard. Okay, so consider the following language on this alphabet. All strings in which um, the third to last character, third to last uh, character uh, is a B. All right. Um, I claim that this is a regular um, language. language, although that's not obvious. Um, and writing a DFA for this sounds hard. Because in a DFA, I have to start, and I have to start processing all the, um, uh, the, 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 the characters one at a time. But I never quite know when I am in the third to last position. And so I never know whether to like, what to do about that, right? That's what, that's what sort of makes this hard, right? Because a string can be arbitrarily long, yes? But didn't you get it? Non-deterministic finite machines are also not the same. In terms I have of said, I have stated without proof that they that these are no more powerful. So but I, but I, what I'm saying is that cognitively, I cannot imagine how to do a DFA for this. But for an NFA, because I have this increased flexibility, this is more it's more intuitive to talk about how this works. So let's work backwards. Um, here I am in my like accept state, right? What does it take? What did it take to get me here? B. My B third, third to last character was a B. Okay, so explain my path. Explain the path to an accept state intuitively. The last two characters are anything. The last two characters are anything. But yeah. Okay. So I should be able to accept a string if the last character can be anything. The second to last character can also be in anything. Right. So this this state uh, I almost need names for these. Let's call let's call this accept state um, x. Let's call this y. Let's call this z or something, right? So so x is the state of I just finished my string and I I'm done now. Y is the state of I have one character left, right? X z is the state of I have two characters left. All right, but the whole point of this language is that the third to last character had to be a b, right? So I think this one has to be a B. I, I needed a B to get here. OK. But now, the problem is, I never know when I'm in state W whether the character I'm about to process actually is my third to last character. right? If I had, so OK, so here's what we do. Can I just kind of like finish this off? Yeah. Um, I, I just non-deterministically guess at every point in my string whether or not it is the third to last character or not. Okay, so suddenly this is just like beautifully solved. Here I am, I begin my string, right? One thing I do is just continue just chilling in this place forever, just kind of processing, doing nothing. Another thing I do simultaneously is hoping while in this state that the character I'm about to process is indeed the third to last character of my string. And on the chance that it is, I proceed to, uh, to, uh, to Z. And then if this really was my third to last character, then I process one more character, one more character, and then I accept. Okay. All right, so what if my string is actually, uh, okay, well, uh, I have several more points to make. It's more fun if you point them out. Well, like, you are, if the B is like, uh, you can go there, but when you get to the X, you'll have like one more um, character left, right? So yeah. then you'll like die. die. Yeah. So, like, so take this string for example. What he's what he's saying is suppose I'm processing the string, right? First I'll be here, and I have only one thing to do with the name, just stay here. Okay? And then my machine will like guess that the B it's about to read is the third to last character. And it will go to Z with three A's left to process. And then I'll go here with two A's left to process. And I'll go here with one A left to process. But then there are just no rules for what to do when I'm in this accept state. And so uh, if I'm in this accept state, anytime I find myself in this accept state with characters left to process, I just die. 
right? Yep. So the only way to make it here and then to actually be accepted is if there are no characters left to process. And so you have to let land here with no characters left to process. And so the only way to do that is if your third to last character was a B. And then if your character, if what if you have A, B, A, so that B is also not your third to last character? Well, we'll guess that it is. And then I'll transition to Y, but then in Y I'll finish processing, so I'll die before I get there, right? Yeah. And then, okay, that, I think that that's that's pretty that's much that's covers it all, right? Yeah. Woo! All right, so this is like simple to write. I challenge you to try to write a DFA that uh, does the same thing. Uh, all right, the one other thing I intended to do today, but I did not get to, is to um, show the algorithm for converting from an NFA to a DFA. Um, so I guess we'll do that on Monday, or I will record a 10 minute video right now and make you watch it or something. But it's pretty cool. Um, so I'm done with class. Let's turn this up. How do you do that with oh. a DFA? Yeah, I, I literally like don't know. Oh, okay. But I do know the algorithm to convert any NFA to a DFA. You just have to do it.